Hello everyone. Today we are going to be talking about everything you need to know about using the I-21 grids. One of the biggest strengths of using I-21 has to do with the framework and its ability to reuse common functionality throughout all the modules. One of the best ways to see this in action is with the grids. So let's get started. One of the things you will notice as you use I-21 is how similar all the grids look and behave. For example, if you were to go to the General Ledger menu, select General Journals, the General Journal grid will open displaying every journal entry you've made. Similarly, if I click the Sales menu and I click on Customers, for example, another grid will open displaying all of your customers. Now you'll notice as I toggle bit back and forth between these two grids, there's a lot of similarities, but the differences have to do primarily with the column names, which makes sense because each record is going to have different field names and column names, so that's the main difference between them. Primarily, all the top buttons are exactly the same, and the only other difference will be these tabs. Now, the tabs are just different views of the same kind of data. For example, going back to Journal, this first tab is for quick searching. It basically has a limited number of columns to keep the grid small, lightweight, and fast. If I click on General Journal, for example, you'll notice it takes a couple of seconds to load but I have more columns with more information. This can be helpful for reporting and looking at other information. The Details tab then would actually detail all the line items inside the journal. So now you'll notice here there's over 2 million records in here and you realize how fast this opened up because it's using a buffered grid. Buffered grids allow us to open up millions of transactions regardless how large they are and they open up almost instantaneously in the grids. Okay, let's go back to the customer screen now and focus on that and I'll show you some of the functionality of what every grid offers. One of the first things you'll notice in the grid is this filter field. Now this is kind of a filter that allows you to search for any data. So in other words, it's a wildcard searching. So if I were to type something like just MA, press enter, you'll see it narrowed the list down to 18 records. Now, it finds anything with the letters MA in it. For example, Main Street it found. And if you look up here is another Main Street. Um, here you'll see it's the MA inside this name or MAN in this name. So the, the, the wildcard searching is fantastic, but there is a limitation to it. When you start to get more than about 5,000 records in, in a grid and you start to use this, it can really slow down because it has to search through every single column of data. So the more columns you have and the more records you have, the slower this feature becomes. So it's not necessarily the preferred function for searching and finding data, but it is something to be aware of. It's great when you're looking for something you're not sure of, but it only works again under about 5,000 records. The better way to search, let's clear that by clicking the X, is to actually search on a particular column. Now there's several ways you can do this. For example, I can come and I can drag, I can click on like the letter, like so I go to state here and I click on IN for Indiana and I click and hold my mouse and I drag and you'll notice it's got this red circle right now, but it's showing the letters IN. As I drag it up anywhere into this toolbar area here, it turns green saying that I'm okay to drop it here. Now when I drop it, you'll notice that it automatically creates a filter specifically on that column. And it's pretty straightforward to understand. You come, you look at the beginning and it says the column is state, it equals IN for Indiana, and you'll notice now the grid has been filtered to show only records in the state of Indiana. You'll also notice here, it says there's 33 total records and I have one selected. I can multi select multiple records by just clicking this checkbox. Okay, I can even just click anywhere on a record and it'll select it. Now you'll see I have five selected. I can click anywhere again to unselect these and I could clear the filter by clicking this X and that'll restore all the records back total of 94. Now what's really cool is is you can actually drag up multiple columns or multiple data so for example I can drag that up and I can drag well let me show you another thing I can also drag just the header like I want to see all the active or inactive customers I'll drag that up here and you'll notice now it doesn't actually take the value because I dragged the column up. But in this case, it's smart enough to know there's only two options. It either is active, yes, or it's not. So I can select no and show me all of my inactive customers in Indiana, or I can toggle back to yes and show me only the active customers. 
Similarly, I could drag any other data like a zip code up and I can have a third criteria, again, further filtering this down to only showing 10 records. Now, what's also really neat is, is let's say you use this kind of filtering a lot and this is a very typical filter you use in your day-to-day -day business for some reason, and you wanna save this. You can come in and you can click Save As and you can give it a name like Customers in Indiana. Click OK, and you'll notice it creates a new tab over here. So let me clear all of this out in the first tab. These tabs, by the way, these, these predefined tabs, we call them, that's part of the I-21. You'll notice they're, they're basically the first tabs are in kind of a black font, but any custom tabs you create are going to be in a different color font, that kind of a bluish color font. So I can click on this, and it'll show me now that custom filter that I saved. On top of that, I could come in and I could say, I want to add this to my menu. So I will click on the menu, say OK. And let me collapse this to get this out of the way so you can see what happened. I go to the sales menu. And you'll see that it put a custom view here, added a new group and added this custom view that I saved. When I click on this, it'll open it up strictly to that view that I saved with all the criteria that I entered. So this is a very fast way from the menu now to get back in and preview what you did. Now, if I wanted to remove this from the menu, you'll notice these buttons up here are slightly different. I have the ability then to delete this view from the menu. So I'll do that. And the menu will refresh here in a second, and it'll remove the menu group. However, I can go back to customers and I still have that tab. Now I can leave it here. There's two different ways you can do it. You can leave the tab here or you can put it on the menu. You can also move this tab around. I could actually make it the first tab if it's my primary tab that I go into all the time. This way, the next time I open the customers tab or the customer view, I'll go right into that tab. I still can go to any of these other ones, but this is a faster way to get to a custom tab. So you have your choice on how to do it. If you want to get rid of your custom tab and you don't want it anymore or don't need it anymore, you can delete it. You can also import or export custom tabs or custom views from other users. So if I wanted to, I could click export. I'll get, a, I'll get an actual download of a, a TX, just a text file. It's a very simple text file. There's nothing proprietary to it. And you can then send that file to another user and they can just simply come in and say import and it'll recreate this tab for them as well. And they can even rename it anything they want. If you make a change to this tab, let's say, for example, I wanted to see all customers regardless of them being active or inactive, I could make that change and maybe I'll take even the zip code out. I just want to see Indiana. Then I could come back to view and I could either save it as a new view, give it a new name, or I could just save over the existing one. So in this case, I'll click save and now this becomes the tabs saved criteria. Now, moving out of this, let's close out of this and let's go back over to the general ledger. Now, open the general journals and you'll notice in this one, we have quite a few records. There's 100, over 100,000 records in here. So what's interesting is, is this is what we call a buffered grid. And a buffered grid, as I explained earlier, has the capability to display literally millions of records instantly. What's neat about the way it works is it doesn't actually download all those millions, or in this case, 103,000 records to your, to your workstation. What it does instead is, is it says, I can only see what's in this window, so I'm going to download to your client what's in this window and maybe another 20 or 30 beyond that, assuming you're going to start to scroll. So in this case, as I scroll, you'll notice how it stays pretty responsive until I get to a certain point. Then it has to do a quick refresh and grab the next 20 or 50 records back from the server. So this is kind of the way we are able to display millions of records. Knowing this, you can get the idea and understand why we can display millions of records or at least seemingly display millions of records quickly. I could drag all the way to the bottom and it'll load the very last records. So it grabbed the very last records. You can see here by the record number on record two, three, four. If I scroll all the way back to the top, now I'm in the 103,000 range. So it doesn't matter where you scroll, I can drag and go to the middle and it's extremely responsive because it simply grabs that chunk of data wherever that scroll bar is and displays it.
Okay, moving on, some of the other things you can do in this. You can export to Excel, PDF, even a text file or a CSV file. And it'll grab whatever the total record numbers are here. So for example, if you have 103,000 and I click Excel, it will create an Excel spreadsheet for you, but it might take a few minutes because you've got quite a few records. In this case, it will download all those records to your workstation. And you'll get a file where you can open it up and see all of this in Excel. Now, another thing you'll notice is these tabs here. This is a, journal, a general journal tab with more records in it, or more columns, I should say. In, in this case, we have some options called Show Totals. Now, when I hit Show Totals, it'll take a couple seconds to load, but it basically shows totals here for the debit and credit. The reason we do that is because, again, this has to total all the data up, and this can take a couple seconds or longer depending on how many records you have. Now, in this case, if this was a 2 million record grid and we had that option on, it could take a little bit of time. It might even take 10, 20, 30 seconds to total a column that has numbers in it because it has that many records. So there's some limitations in the performance depending on what you're doing, which is why we make these options. But as far as searching goes, we keep it straightforward, very simplistic, which keeps the search grids extremely fast. Okay, a couple other quick things to note on this is you can, let's scroll back to the top here, you can, you can take a column like currency and I can drag it and move it anywhere I'd like. And you'll see these little kind of blue arrows come in to show me where I'm going to drop it. So I'm holding my left mouse button down while I do this. And I let go and you'll see currency move to this position. I can also resize the column to any size I want. I can also come in and say, I, let's say on the date here or any of these headers, I can click left or right mouse. It doesn't matter. Either one will bring up what we call this flyout menu. And this flyout menu has a lot of options in it. And the primary ones here are sorting. So I can sort this now ascending or descending. So in this case, I sorted it descending. I can also come in and I can say, well, let me group this by the enter date. So when I do that, you'll notice the grid changes and it groups everything based on the entered date. So all of these are 11, 24, 2015, so on and so forth. And I can come back in and I can change the sort order. I can do whatever I want on here. If I want to clear the group, I just simply clear the group. And it brings you back to the regular grid state. And any one of these columns can be done the same way. So I could come over to record number, for example, click and say I want to sort this ascending or descending, or whatever I want to do. Now, back over here, I can also, or anywhere on here, I can click any one of these, and I can say I want to show or hide certain columns. So, for example, let me take away the currency, take away the posted, and reverse date. And now I'm left with only these columns. I can similarly come in and click on a column like date posted and just say hide this column and it'll just hide that one column. To bring all these columns back, I just simply come in, click any column anywhere and just start checking the ones that I want to have back. And no matter how you configure this, whether I sort these, whether I put the columns in different orders or whatever I decide to do or hide different columns, I can always come back to this view and save it that way. And the next time I open it, it'll be exactly the way I configured this grid. One last thing I'll go over quickly is, is how you can actually do a little bit more custom filtering. So for example, let me bring the date up. I'm just going to bring the columns up. Now you'll notice I, I didn't grab an actual value here. It depends where you drag. So if I drag and click on a column value like this, you'll notice how it's grabbed the 5-17-2016 value. If I come over here and click on import, imported journal, it grabs that value. So whatever value you grab on here, it'll bring it up to the top and automatically filter it and put it in. However, the other way to do it is simply grabbing the column header itself and not a value. So let's say I grab enter date and I drag it up here. You'll notice what happens is, is it puts in enter date and it gives me some options. I can select an enter date that's between two date ranges or I could say before a date or after a date or equals to a date or I could even say show me everything that was put in the last 30 days and it'll automatically filter it in and these are kind of read only back you know, displaying the last 30 days. 
So there's a lot of functionality behind, besides just dragging a specific individual value up. So you'll notice when I drag a value up like a date, like this one here, and I grab this up, it assumes you want it to be equal to that date and not between. Whereas if I drag a date column header up, it's going to then say, okay, I'm gonna start with between, you might want a between range, but you can change it to equal, and you can click on the calendar and enter a date, or you can type a date. So for example, it's October right now, and there's a really neat feature in throughout all I-21 date fields called Smart Date. I can just simply enter the number three, and it knows that, it assumes that three is the day, and it then takes the month that I'm currently in and the year I'm currently in and fills it in for me automatically. So this makes date entry extremely fast and efficient, and this you'll see in every screen anywhere in I-21. It's another awesome framework feature that you gotta learn to take advantage of. Okay, let's clear this again and go back and show a couple others. Let's say I wanted to do um, a description. Let me drag the description up. Now, description is interesting because it's a text field. Now, you'll notice there's different options here com compared to the date. In here, I can show just a description with anything that contains a certain value. So let's say I said GJ and I pressed enter. It's going to go find anything with the letters GJ in it no matter where it's at, okay? However, I could also say I want it to equal that. Now, when I do that, there's nothing that specifically just has two letters, so it comes back with zero records. I could say not equal to, and that's going to probably bring back all records because there wasn't any that had any. I could say starts with, and in this case, there are none that start with GJ, but maybe there are some with GEN. Nope, let's go back and start IM. Oop, hang on, let's go back here. Description, let me look at what's available here. Okay, test. So let's go back, drag this up, and say starts with, all right, duplicates, another good one. So DUP, enter. And in this case, you'll see that it starts with DUP or anything to the left, to the right of that. I can also do ends with, so it would grab the, the, you know, the last characters of that. Um, I could do a between value if I want. I could say, show me ones that have no data in it or show me ones that are not blank. Um, you can also do this by clicking on this little magnifying glass button. This will simply bring down a new filter that you can just select manually. So for example, instead of dra it's easier to drag a column up, but you could also do it this way and say, give me the journal type and it contains, and now in the journal type, I'll say GEN, and it'll bring back everything that has GEN in it for journals. So there's a lot of different things you can do. And again, when you're all finished, you can save this off, put it on the menu, whatever you want. But this should give you a really good idea of how to use the grids throughout all of the I-21 screens. They're all very similar. They all have a very same look and feel. Once you understand how to use one, the rest are going to be similar. The only difference is the different column types for obviously the different data and potentially different predefined tabs or your custom tabs. Hope you enjoyed this. Thank you.